In 2009, an ex-Marine named Mac, Mac McKinney, the individual you see beside me, was uh, unfortunately prepared to engage in an act of domestic terror. Uh, he was planning on bombing an Indiana mosque. And then the story takes an incredible turn. There was an incredible display of humanity and generosity by the very people he intended to terrorize by bombing them. And as a result, he decided to change his mind on Islam forever. So his story was detailed recently in a New Yorker documentary called Stranger at the Gate. But before we get to some of the clips, I do want to give you some details, some context, and then we'll watch. So Richard Mac McKinney was a former US Marine who had developed a hatred toward Islam during combat in Iraq and Afghanistan. His fury deepened when he returned home to Muncie, Indiana to see how Muslims had settled into what he called his city and even sent their children to sit next to his daughter at her elementary school. So he was livid about that. And look, you also have to understand the radicalizing nature of the military, especially in regard to the wars in the Middle East, where the whole point is to dehumanize people of Muslim faith, to hunt them down, kill them. I mean, that, and especially if you're a member of the military who did multiple tours in either Afghanistan or Iraq, and then you came back to the United States with no support for some of the mental health issues that arise from that kind of constant combat and constant tours to the Middle East, you could understand why people would find themselves in a very, very dark place. Now, McKinney says he was trained to see the Iraqi and Taliban soldiers he fought not as human beings, but as paper targets on a shooting range. He also said he struggled to find a new community after he left what he calls the band of brothers he fought alongside during his service. Once he returned home, he drifted into drinking and womanizing to numb his wartime experiences. And he felt like the Muslims he saw in America just didn't belong there. And so unable to contain his anger, he went to an Islamic center on what he saw as his final mission, okay? He was gonna carry out this act of terror, he was gonna bomb them. But as you're gonna see, he's gonna explain what he was planning on doing and then we'll talk about what ended up happening. My plan was to detonate an IED right outside the Muncie Islamic Center. On a Friday afternoon, when they were all gathered, and I was hoping for at least 200 or more dead, injured, at least. That was my goal, 200 or more. So he walks into this center and he's met with kindness. And what he planned on doing actually didn't end up happening, luckily, because of how open and welcoming the people of faith were in this Islamic center. So let's watch the next clip on that. He came to the masjid and he's like a guest also. So I, uh, I couldn't help it except to hug him and make him feel, not artificially from my heart, that, that he is welcome and he is part of us. To this day, that still doesn't make any sense to me. He sits at my feet. He hugged my leg. This guy doesn't know me. Hugged my leg. So the, the man who hugged his leg, his name is Mohammed Barami. And that is incredible. And incre I, I understand how difficult it is to be welcoming, open, and kind to someone who comes into your space in a hostile way. But he did it. And it made all the difference. It is incredible. There's a guy in that church who's African American, uh, and uh, he converted to Islam as well. And uh, he was one of the guys who talked Mac into, you know, uh, not hating them. Uh, and he said, because I know what Islam did for me. He said uh, one of his great great ancestors was uh, was lynched, uh, and they had mutilated his genitals, etc. I was thinking it was his great great grandfather. Uh, and and he said he had grown up with a hatred for white people, and he said Islam made me let go of the hatred. Now, if you don't know anything about Islam, you might, or even worse, if you're watching media in America, you might think like, oh my God, I don't get it. I, I was told that Islam is 
full of dark, hateful people who are going to bomb me, right? And that, that's where Mac got the idea in the first place. Where do you think he got him? He got it in the military, but he also got it, our, got it in our media. When do you ever see positive depictions of Muslims? And so, um, but in reality, in Islam, one of the great things about it, and there's of course downsides to any religion, and we've talked about that as well. Uh, but the, the the great upside is that it really cares about equality, the, and what it does not care about race at all. And it is it emphasizes white, black, brown. It doesn't matter at all, Asian, that everyone is equal under God. It is one of the pillars of Islam, and so that's why both the white guy who's a right winger and the and the black guy uh, come in with hate in their heart, but walk out with love. Mm -hmm. And so Mac at the end. When they all surround him after he converts, uh, and they all hug him, and he said it was just one of the greatest moments of his life. Yeah, because finally someone's showing him love instead of hate. We didn't even get there, by the way. Yes, he eventually ended up converting, which blows my mind. So uh, there's another uh, woman within the center. Her name is Bibi Barami, and she's actually the co-founder of the Islamic Center of Muncie, and is known as like the Mother Teresa of her community because of how open and loving and generous she happens to be. She actually invited Mac over for a home cooked Afghan dinner. And they actually got to know each other as people. And see, this is this is what I'm talking about when it comes to, let's say, you have family members who got sucked into the QAnon conspiracy theory community or got sucked into whatever questionable group, hateful group, whatever it is. I know that the urge is to cut them off. But if you genuinely care about changing hearts and minds, cutting them off only helps them kind of like reinforce some of the toxic beliefs that they've come across and have taken on as, as their own beliefs. Having communication with people who are understanding, open and provide a different perspective is really important because it humanizes the other side, yeah, right? 100%. So, yeah. I, I want people to be clear, this is not a story about Islam. Um, it's definitely yeah. not an ad for Islam. Remember, I grew up Muslim and I left the religion. Uh, because I just don't think it's true, so that's a that's a different thing. It isn't about that. It's about hey, maybe we should talk to each other, and maybe we should be decent to one another, and maybe we, you know, look, this part is obvious. We should teach something other than hate, right? And you, unfortunately, it's so prevalent, guys. If you grew up in America, and I grew up as a Muslim in America, and all I ever saw about Muslims was bombings, death, darkness, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, how is somebody like, look, it turns out Mac's not a bad guy. But he was taught that hatred. Yeah. He was taught it, right? And it took an extraordinary act of kindness for him to unteach that lesson, right? Why don't we just talk to each other? And look, we do it too. We yell at right wingers all the time. And their leaders deserve to be yelled at. We're not going to do unilateral surrender. But in terms of the actual voters, the followers, the citizens, regular people. Regular people. We need to talk to each other a lot more. I We're going to find a lot more commonality than we realize. Both mainstream media and right wing media are trying to split us apart. They're trying to divide us. Thousand percent. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's divide and conquer, which is why it's important to call out what politicians are currently doing, right? Engaging in the kind of rhetoric they do, sowing the kind of hatred that they sow. They do it intentionally because they love the division, they profit from it. They maintain power as a result of it, and that's why you got to call it out. But when it comes to everyday people, if you can stomach it, I know how difficult it is. It is important to talk to each other. Yeah, and look, unfortunately, a great example is a story we just covered earlier in the show. Marjorie Taylor Greene talking about how the immigrants are coming to replace you. You should be really afraid of them. You should hate them. But if you met them, you might actually like them because they're other human beings who also care about their family and came here for hope in the American dream. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all of that. All you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.